What's wrong? It's just so hard. I can't land this bottle. I don't know what to do. Well, that's probably because you're bad. Here, try this. What's this? Salt water? Why would that help? Oh my! Wait, why exactly does that work? I don't know. I just saw it on a TikTok. Oh, maybe we can figure it out then. A few moments later. So, to understand why salt water works better than regular water when you're doing a bottle flip, we have to understand the physics of a bottle flip in the first place. So here we have this empty water bottle. And one of the main things we need to focus on is its center of gravity. Namely, where the two sides balance out on the bottle. I've marked out an approximate point on this dot right here. And what we're gonna do with this is figure out why an empty bottle tends to miss and bounce off so much. So first of all, a fundamental physics principle is that when the center of gravity of an object stays constant, which it is in this case, because the distribution of weight, no matter which position you put it in, it's not gonna change, then the velocity, aka speed, of the object will also not change when you throw it or flip it, assuming that there's no external forces. This means that the bottle, no matter how you flip it, is gonna maintain its speed throughout the flip. This means that the speed it has on the peak of the flip when it's completely upside down will be almost equal to the speed it has when it touches the ground. This speed is almost way too much for the friction to handle, and this is one of the primary reasons why you'll see it simply bounce off, because the friction isn't enough on the object to slow it down completely. The second reason why the center of gravity matters so much is that fundamentally, you want the center of gravity throughout the flip to be as close to the ground as possible. This is because on the end of your flip, you want the bottle to go almost straight down, squarely on the base, so there's a higher probability for it landing. However, on this one, the center of gravity is so high throughout the flip that it's almost certain that it'll approach the ground at an angle while it's still flipping, rather than squarely on the base. That's reason number two. It also relates to the center of gravity. The final reason why it's so hard to land a, an empty water bottle is because of its weight. Because of its lightness, it bounces off way too easily off the ground, which is another reason why it's extremely difficult. For instance, that flip was essentially the culmination of all three of those factors tying in so that it simply bounces off the ground rather than landing perfectly on its base. So we can just get this out of here. Here we have the other side of the spectrum, a full body. Once again, we've marked the approximate center of gravity here with a black dot. And once again, it's gonna play a huge role in flipping a full body. Similarly to the empty bottle, the center of gravity is going to remain near constant. This is because although there is fluid inside here, which changes depending on the shape or position it's in, there's such little space for the fluid to move around in that it's near impossible for it to change the distribution of weight or more commonly known as the center of gravity. Because of this, in this example as well, the center of gravity is going to remain near constant, which means that the velocity or the speed is also going to remain near constant, assuming no external forces, obviously, like air resistance. However, the impact here is magnified. As we know, it's a lot harder to stop a heavier object than a lighter object, simply due to the force and momentum it creates. It's no different with flipping a bottle. Because a full bottle is going to be a lot heavier than an empty one, it's going to be much harder for the friction to contain the bottle 
as it goes through its flip. In addition, as we saw with the empty bottle, since the bottle is not particularly bottom heavy, i.e. the center of gravity is very high, this means that it's uh, increasingly unlikely for the bottle to land squarely on its base. It's most likely going to land at an angle because its center of gravity is just so high in relation to the object. So we can get rid of this one too. Although, since we know that a bottle with more weight is going to carry more force, I'm just going to put this lightly to the ground. Here, we have the traditional bottle, one that's about one-third to one-fourth of the way filled. This satisfies most of the criteria I went over before regarding the center of gravity and the weight. This is because, although it has fluid like the extremely heavy one, there's enough space for it to move around that it can change the distribution of weight depending on the position it's in because of fluid's nature to change depending on its shape or position. This means that the formulas I tossed around before are completely out of the window because if the center of gravity does not remain constant during the flip, then the velocity won't either. And this proves my point on why this bottle is a lot better than the empty or full one because its center of gravity changes so the velocity also changes as a result. This means that the bottle will inherently kind of slow down so that it's easier for the friction to contain. The center of gravity works to this bottle's advantage in another way. Namely, the fact that no matter what position you put it in, in the flip, it's always going to be weighted downward to, toward the ground. This means that in its descent, it's more likely to come straight down squarely on its base rather than at an enormous angle and end up bouncing off like the other two. Secondly, its weight also plays a huge difference because in the empty bottle, as we saw, it was so light that it simply bounced off all surfaces that you flipped it on. But with this one, it's heavy enough that it kind of anchors it down even when it does end squarely. So this is the perfect bottle. Now that we've successfully established the main criteria for landing the perfect bottle flip, we can reflect on these later when we actually take into account salt water. Just on a quick side note here, we can see why a small water bottle like this would be even better suited to a bottle flip. This is because its center of gravity remains changing because there is fluid and it's moving around and changes the distribution of weight. But this center of gravity is going to remain closer to the ground since this is a much smaller bottle, which means that there's a higher chance of it landing perfectly. In addition, its weight, now this might not seem like very heavy, but when you take that in relation to the bottle itself, it actually is pretty heavy and it's able to anchor itself down. Now, there's also a third reason why this bottle tends to do extremely well. It's because the base of this is enormous, especially compared to a much larger bottle. In fact, if you compare a smaller one with most larger ones, the bases tend to match up perfectly. This helps because this means there's a larger landing spot that you can have and even a slight misflip has so much area that it can still stabilize itself. Now for the question at hand. The area where we're going to take all of the facts that we learned previously and answer the question that we originally raised in the beginning. Why does salt water tend to land more in a bottle flip than regular water? So first of all, we need to look back at our criteria and make sure that salt water at least satisfies these, if not raises the bar entirely. So center of gravity, we know there's kind of two subparts to this. One is that at all times, the center of gravity has to be weighted towards the ground so that in its descent, it lands vertically rather than at a huge angle. The second criteria for center of gravity is that it has to constantly change so that its velocity also changes. 
The third criteria, or second in general, is the weight. The weight has to be enough in relation to the object itself that it can anchor itself down on a flip rather than just bouncing off. So now, let's see if these criteria meet the salt water. So we know that center of gravity is satisfied because there's more than enough room for the fluid to move around and change that distribution of weight. And second of all, no matter how you put it in, the water is going to be weighted so that the center of gravity is extremely close to the ground, which means it'll land squarely almost every time, depending on the flip you do, of course. Now let's come to its weight. This is the part where salt water tends to beat regular water. Since salt is so much denser than water, being a solid, and it tends to dissolve in water almost the moment you put it in, it barely takes up any space in comparison to the water itself, which means center of gravity is hardly going to be affected because there's still enough room for the fluid to move around, as you can see here. And because of this, the fluid can weight itself so that the bottom will always be heavier. This means that center of gravity is left untouched, but the weight, since salt does carry a weight, and if you put a lot of it in, it does make a difference, the heavier it is, the better, as we established before. But the problem with getting a heavier bottle is that its center of gravity is most likely going to be disrupted. In this case, since salt takes up such little space, its center of gravity is hardly disrupted at all, and the weight criteria is even strengthened because it's heavier depending on how much salt you put in it. After you put a lot, you can really feel the difference, and depending on the amount you put, it will produce varying results. So in conclusion, we know that salt water is going to act better than regular water because of these two criteria and all the science that surrounds them. Here, we can see that the culmination of all of these factors ties into the salt water bottle because it has a stable flip due to a changing yet low center of gravity and anchors down due to its weight. We also have the regular water bottle, which as you can see here has a good flip because of its center of gravity, but slightly wobbles on impact because of its weight. Next, we have the completely empty water bottle, which has a low weight, which means it'll simply bounce off, and a high and constant center of gravity, which means it'll likely hit the ground at an angle. Finally, we have the full bottle, which much like the smaller one, has a constant and high center of gravity, so it hits the ground at an angle. As you can see in this amazing simulation of a bottle flip, link in the description, the velocity slows down at the bottle's peak, allowing it to be easier contained by the friction. Since it's bottom heavy at all times, the bottle tends to approach the ground much straighter than the empty or full bottles. Finally, its weight can allow it to be anchored and slightly tip over, even when the bottle does not land absolutely perfectly on its base, which is much more stable than the empty bottle, which simply bounces off the ground. So I hope this was an interesting video that maybe even helped you learn some basic physics principles or even how to apply them to real world scenarios. But the main point of this video was to prove that practical demonstrations can beat that of memorization oftentimes because it can help you connect it to other subjects that may even help you in the real world. Thank you so much for watching and maybe even spread this knowledge by teaching someone else the things you learn here or thinking of a different scenario to apply these same principles to where it can actually help you and maybe even further your success.